Ryan Charles from Nitty Gritty Studios here with a quick crash course on online versus offline editing, proxy files, media cache, and render files. Essentially, there are two types of media, one could say. You have your online footage, which is your camera originals, or if you created some optimized media from those camera originals, and your offline footage. This will be your proxy files, lower quality, smaller files that are easier to handle on most computers. Now this offline should not be mistaken with the offline in the sense that a media clip goes offline. This is offline in the sense that you don't need a super powerful computer to be able to edit with them. And in fact, even the bigger budget Hollywood movies tend to use this proxy workflow. In brief, when you shoot footage with most digital cameras these days, they save the information into what is known as a codec, meaning the camera codes it upon recording and your computer decodes it later in your editing program. Now some higher end digital cameras like the RED or the ARRI Alexa shoot what is known as a RAW format, technically not a codec since no encoding is actually going on. Apple recently released a RAW version of their famously popular ProRes codec. Now because these RAW files are so big and robust, they're terribly hard to use while editing on most computers. So you instead create smaller, easier to handle proxy files to do the most of your offline editing with. Once you're picture locked, you reconnect your sequence back to your original RAW or optimized footage and voila. Now in Final Cut Pro, it's as easy as going up in here to view and selecting proxy or optimized original from the dropdown. Now most other digital cameras outside of the RAW formats shoot codecs that not only compress the information to various degrees, but are also very unwieldy to edit with because of something known as long gop compression or group of pictures. Essentially, rather than encoding each individual frame in your movie separately, it takes a look over a group of pictures as to what in the frame actually changes and only encodes that. So for these types of codecs, you're mostly going to want to create new optimized media. These codecs, like Apple ProRes or the DNX brand for Avid, use what is called intra-frame compression, essentially encoding each individual frame by itself. These codecs are less processor intensive and therefore more fluid to edit with. Final Cut, along with all the other NLEs out there on the market, create what are known as media cache files. This is largely done in the background, really without much of your knowledge, and can end up filling up your hard drive and bogging your system down if you're not too careful. And there are things you should be doing to manage these files, but we'll get into that more later in another lesson. These files are generally things like database files, actual images of the waveforms that you see in the timeline, thumbnails of video clips, and other such metadata. Render files. Render files are essentially full transcodes of a clip or portion of a clip in your timeline that has trouble playing in real time, either due to its robust size or because of effects and color that's been added to it. Let's say you're dealing with 4K red raw files. Now these will more than likely not play smoothly on your system unless you're dealing with a super powerful computer. So what you can do instead is render that portion of the timeline that's giving you trouble and it'll play smoothly because it's created some ProRes files in the background to use for playback. So as you can see, proxy and optimized media, media cache and render files, these are all files created throughout the post-production process to allow your project to play smoothly in real time on your timeline and to keep your project organized. Now although different NLEs manage these files in different ways, the basic principles remain the same regardless of what NLE you are working with. That's all folks. Ryan Charles from Nitty Gritty Studios saying happy cutting.